Welcome to Computer Network Security. Today's topic is going to be on IPsec. So first of all, just an overview of what IP security is. It was defined in RFC 1636, uh, titled Security in the Internet Architecture. And uh, it was issued in 1994 by the Internet Architecture Board and it identifies the key areas for security mechanisms. We have a need to secure the network infrastructure from unauthorized monitoring and control of network traffic, and the need to secure end-to-end -end user traffic, uh, or end-user to end-user traffic using authentication and encryption mechanisms. So, uh, to uh, get you thinking about why this is necessary, if you remember back to when we were talking about the different types of uh, malicious software, uh, passive attacks allowed us to monitor other traffic, but since we weren't intercepting it and we weren't making uh, any changes to it, which would be more of an active attack, it was very hard to detect if a passive attack was occurring. Uh, what uh, IPsec tries to do is to make it where it's going to be more difficult for uh, even a passive attack to occur if we're securing at the IP layer. Uh, this is included in IP version 6, uh, and there is now a specification for IPsec uh, as an internet standard. Here are some of the applications of IP security. It allows us to secure communications across a LAN, private and public, uh, wide area networks, and also the internet. Just some examples here uh, from our textbook. Secure a branch office connectivity over the internet so that they're able to communicate back with, let's say, a corporate office, secure remote access over the internet, uh, establishing an extranet and intranet connectivity with partners and so on. Uh, the principal feature, the bottom bullet there, of IPsec is that it can encrypt and or authenticate all traffic and it is doing it at layer three. It's doing it at the IP level uh, instead of doing it at some of the other levels. If you uh, look back to the different encryption algorithms that we've discussed so far. Those were all running at layer 7. So when we're using RSA or triple DES or AES, these are all running at layer 7. So uh, everything below that is still going to be unencrypted. IPsec is where we're now going to look at encrypting at layer 3 instead of waiting until we get all the way up to layer 7. Here is an overview of how it works. So starting up at the top, you see this is a user system that has IPsec in it. Now when it sends off uh, the, the packet, we still have the IP header at layer 3, but then we have an IPsec header. This is the IP security header, and then we have the secure IP payload. Now inside of the payload of an IP packet is a segment, which is from layer 4. So if you remember that we keep wrapping from each layer. So the user types something that becomes the message goes into our layer 7 message. Then we go down through the layers, layer 6, layer 5, and the internet. Of course we don't have those two layers, um, but looking at the OSI model we go through layer 6, we add a header, and uh, the, the payload becomes the layer 7 message. At layer 5 we add a header, and then the payload becomes what we got from layer 6. We go down to layer 4, and at the layer 4 we have a segment, so we add a header onto it, and the payload becomes what we got at layer 5. Then we go down to layer 3 at the IP layer, and at layer 3, we add the header, and the payload of an IP packet, or of a layer 3 packet, is going to be your segment. So what we've done now is we've secured the segment as the secure IP payload. So this is now going to be encrypted for us. Uh, and so the only thing that's unencrypted now is the IP header at layer 3. And uh, below that then we also have layer 2, which is going to be unencrypted. And layer 1, of course, is not encrypted, but this is just the bits, uh, the, the voltage layers levels, the bits that are going across uh, the wire. So that's not going to be encrypted either. So we've encrypted down on a much lower layer. We still had to keep the IP header uh, the same though. If the IP header wasn't going to be the same and we actually had just the IPsec header, the problem that we would have there is that every router throughout the internet would have to support IPsec. And this is not something that's going to happen anytime soon. Uh, IP version 6 supports IPsec, however, we have to make sure that we're supporting both IP version 4 and IP version 6 simultaneously since there are so many routers already in existence on the internet that 
uh, support IP version 4. So what we have to do is we still have to have the IP header so that all those routers uh, in the internet are still going to be able to route our packet and get it to the desired destination. However, everything above layer 3 is now going to be encrypted. Actually, not even above layer 3. This is everything other than the header at layer 3. So the payload at layer 3 and everything above that is going to be encrypted now. <clears throat> okay. So some benefits that we have to IP security. Um, obviously, we have strong security when it's implemented in a firewall or a router uh, for all traffic which is crossing the perimeter. Um, IPsec is below the transport layer, so it's below the TCP, UDP, which both run at layer 4, so it's transparent to applications. We are going to decrypt this before we send the data back up to layer 4. So the uh, end users don't even necessarily have to know uh, that we are using this, because remember, layer 4 is the first end-to-end -end layer. Uh, that's an important thing to note about layer 4, is that it's the first end-to-end -end layer that we have in the OSI model. If we're encrypting the payload of layer of a layer 3 packet, then layer 4 is not going to know about it because we're going to decrypt the payload of the packet before we even send that back up to layer 4. So uh, layer 4 doesn't need to know about it. It makes uh, IPsec transparent to applications, meaning we don't need to change any software that we have on user or server systems, and that's a big plus. Uh, here that we can have security but we don't need to change anything on every single end user's computer. Um, that covers the next point there also and IPsec can provide security for individual users if needed. Uh, this is useful especially for setting up secure virtual subnetworks so um, virtual networks within an organization also. Here is a diagram there is a, a number of different documents that have to go into creating an IPsec packet you see, starting down at the bottom left, the architecture covers general concepts, security requirements, definitions, mechanisms, defining IPsec technology. You should show their RFC 4301. Moving up, we get to 4302, the authentication header. It's an extension header to provide message authentication. Up at the top, encapsulating security payload uh, consists of an encapsulating header and trailer used to provide encryption or combine encryption and authentication. We've talked about encryption, we've talked about authentication in the past. Hopefully you understand the distinction between the two of those. Uh, comparing who's able to read the data as opposed to making sure that the data came from the person from whom we believe it should. Uh, Internet key exchange collection of documents describing the key management schemes for use with IPsec. We've talked about key management schemes before. How do we get a key from one uh, computer to another, especially when we're dealing with symmetric key encryption. And then cryptographic algorithms, uh, we've talked about a number of different cryptographic algorithms and this is an open algorithm where we can use this, uh, use whichever cryptographic algorithm we would like. Okay, some of the services, security services at the IP layer. Uh, enables the system to select the required security protocols, determine the algorithm to use for the service, put in place any cryptographic keys required to provide the requested services. This is what I was just talking about, that we have this uh, open, that we are able to uh, use whatever we would like there. RFC 4301 lists a few more services. You can take a look at that RFC. Uh, I wouldn't recommend doing this while you are going to sleep at night unless you have insomnia and would like to. Uh, but we have access control, connectionless integrity, data origin authentication, and so on. Uh, rejection of replayed packets, uh, confidentiality, and limited traffic flow confidentiality. There are two modes that we have, uh, transport mode and tunnel mode. This just gives an overview of what the differences are between the two. Provides uh, Transport mode provides protection primarily for upper layer protocols. Examples include a TCP or UDP segment or an ICMP packet. This would be transport mode. This is kind of what we've described so far, so far used for end-to-end -end communication between two hosts. Tunnel mode, on the other hand, provides protection to the entire IP packet. It's used when one or both ends of a security association are a security gateway. Well, what we uh, are able to do here, then, uh, is that if our entire network, let's say, is behind uh, a firewall, we have our entire network that supports IPsec, then maybe we don't even have to uh, have that IP header on the front. But instead, 
uh, we can encrypt the entire IP packet and just have the IPsec header rather than just the IP packet. So that's an interesting uh, idea there that we can get away and then people wouldn't even be able to see uh, who we are trying to speak with uh, the destination of the packet if we were able to encrypt the entire header also and then the decryption occurs on the router the question is how do we make sure we don't know all of the routers with, uh, through which our packet will be routed so all of those routers would then have to be able to decrypt that's going to add a tremendous amount of overhead to our routing algorithms to uh, our processing of the packets on the routers and I don't know if the benefit is really uh, that great unless you're in a very very highly unsecure area this would probably be very useful for uh, military applications defense applications would probably find a lot of use in this uh, or uh, communicating over a wireless link this would help also okay here's just a, a description uh, comparing the two transport mode and tunnel mode probably a good slide to understand what the differences are between uh, these two so take a look at that uh, the difference with uh, how authentication header uh, packets are going to be transmitted as opposed to the encapsulated security payload and then the one with authentication. Okay, that gives you an overview of IP security. Take a look at the papers, some good papers on this lecture. Take a look at those, read into it a little bit more. It'll go through some details about how these take place, uh, how we actually do this, what the routers have to do when it receives the packets, and how we go back and decrypt just the, the payload uh, when, before we send it back up to the transport layer. Okay, if you have any questions, let me know. Good luck.